hello traders it's samurai trader here welcome to this training session scalping and day trading fast moving markets over the last week or so we've seen some extreme volatility in the market particularly focused on the equities market and these can be extremely dangerous times to trade however the market still up uh, offers us some extremely good trading opportunities and we're going to be looking at some of those on the chart so in this video it doesn't matter when you're watching it if you are say watching it a year after the coronavirus scare has passed uh, this video will still be just as applicable or should I say the information <laughs> in this video as always these videos or these recordings are raw real and unedited so if I um, slip up on something you'll have to forgive me so very quickly there is a risk disclaimer uh, there is a risk in trading if you're reading the disclaimer please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer if you're not a current member of the day traders fast track program just a very quick advertisement I should say if you're not a member please click on the link below and request my free ebook for truth about day trading make sure you also subscribe to my youtube channel and you can also request a copy of my free training manual actually not even request it you can go to the website and download it from there so moving right along one of I've got uh, I think it's over seven and a half thousand members now and I've got over 200 coaching members and I talk about this all the time success is never due to one thing but failure can be and particularly in this sort of market where we're seeing extreme volatility and traders suffer from what we call FOMO fear of missing out traders if you've got one market that's extremely volatile there are usually other markets that are very tradable I'm going to give you some alternative markets to consider it's not only just your trading account that can take a real dent in this uh, markets whether they're extremely volatile but it's also your confidence as a trader because what we're experiencing right now is extreme slippage in placing orders but not only that if you get stopped it's not uncommon in an incredibly fast moving market to get three four or five ticks slip past your stop loss so it's just not getting in but it's if you get stopped out and that can certainly hurt you as well now typically if we look at this chart here on the today's volume and I'm not going to give you today's date because once again this video uh, is ageless it doesn't matter when you watch this this is the information I'm giving you is exactly the same in any fast moving market the ES today turned over three and a half thousand sorry three and a half million contracts now typically the ES will turn over around 1.5 on an average good day so we can see here we've got some extreme volume and what usually comes through a volume particularly on the equity markets is volatility where we see some spikes we see the market really flying which means slippage when we enter a trade very hard to get in uh, perhaps on a limit you might be able to jump in if you've got a buy stop or a sell stop well in advance but they're difficult to trade the bond nearly 2 million and actually it would have hit 2 million this screenshot I took was um, 15 minutes sorry 45 minutes before the market closed we go down here the euro stock x50 uh, even you look at the NQ uh, the micro contract and we've got around a million contracts so we've got a lot of volume we go down to the 10 year note one of the markets that is still tradable and we're going to be looking at the charts in a moment in a few minutes at some of these are 3.1 million however the 10 year note and CL are a couple of these markets that still remained tradable so we'll look at these closer in a moment with some further suggestions now in a normal situation what I tell my traders is we have three different markets there are really three different trading sessions we've got the, the New York session generally generally speaking that's where we've got the most volatility and the most volume flowing except for Forex the, where the currency markets where you're looking at the London session but generally most markets are focused on New York and when you go when we roll over from New York into the Globex session which is actually the Asian session uh, you've got to really get used to the market slowing right down but the advantages of that is you can have 
or use a smaller chart size which means a smaller stop so there are advantages in that uh, then from Asia we then lead into the London session where our volume will pick right up again but what we've been experiencing is really the last uh, week or so the last 24 or during each 24 hour period all sessions have been extremely volatile and difficult to trade so when we're day trading and scalping fast moving markets we've got a few considerations first of all do you even trade at all are you better off uh, taking a few days off and this is where pharma comes in and it's very very difficult for most traders the market choice is going to be here next week the week after and next month and that's one of the greatest challenges however if you're open-minded there are a lot of other markets that are still very tradable and we will be looking at those in a few minutes now certainly we can increase the time frame but there can be some drawbacks to that also such as increasing our stop losses that is if you like to tuck your stop say under the closest little swing low or swing high and you're trading a, a higher time frame that means a much larger stop and one of the challenges there is are you staying within the risk parameters of your trading account stand aside take a few a break for a few days trade an alternative market so here are what the main concerns are or main considerations I should say first of all which market is a tradable so what's my definition is it tradable my definition is that you can trade if you're say used to using a limit order or a buy or sell stop that you can still do that but some markets that when I say they're untradable they take off so quickly and say if you use an EMA bounce strategy you might be 10 ticks away before you even blink that makes it not tradable and also it's not tradable if it's no longer within your uh, account size limitations that is within the 2% risk rule now what other considerations can you make or what markets could you consider well right now if we look at the equities markets which are particularly extremely volatile even though CL the black gold the Texas T has been dropping in price and there's been some volatility overall 90% of the time it's still been very very tradable we're still using the same um, uh, tick size candles uh, the same Renko candles etc so that is still a great alternative now for our ES traders if you've never traded CL ES is 1250 a tick with CL is $10 a tick so it's not a, a big difference very very similar and I personally believe you get much smoother waves in CL either way now the next one is the 10 and 30 year note and particularly if we consider the 10 year note where I believe and where I really believe it's better than the 30 year note you get better waves better trends even though we've seen some extreme a lot of volume pumping through 3 million contracts a day 99% of the time it's still also been very tradable at $15 on a tick uh, it's perhaps a little higher but if you're looking at a four tick uh, stop on average it's still not too bad then we look at the currency futures and the Forex market the currency markets EC and we'll have a quick look at that also has still been very tradable so it's really time that you did consider other markets and I think Richard Dennis said this many many years ago read the setups that you use traders if you're trading a market where the, the, the strategies that you use on that market you cannot apply to any other market well perhaps you shouldn't be trading that strategy and I tend to agree with him no matter what strategy you have it should work on any market now the next key consideration is the broker margin requirements now most margin requirements that come out are, have been um, outlined or are required by the CME so the CME will contact your broker uh, particularly when it comes to the futures markets and say here are the margin requirements for these contracts and of course the day trading rates are all the margin requirements have gone through the roof and so have the overnight margins so if your broker offered overnight margins 
uh, you'll find that they've gone up considerably because of the extreme volatility so read your account size you do need to consider that so CL has remained relatively good in that way in that uh, sense and so has the 10 year note now we consider the chart type now when it comes to trading traders and if we look at the major charts that are used we've got the time based charts now the challenge with time based charts if you're used to say trading a five minute or a ten minute bar they're huge meaning that if you wish to say place your stop loss under the closest swing low or swing high or even under your entry candle you might be looking at a 20 tick stop okay you're looking at a massive stop loss so this is where you really want to look at lowering the time frame even right down to a 15 second or a 30 second which I'm going to show you as well see one advantage you do have with a time based chart is at least you know when the candle or when the uh, of a bar is going to close and so that's that's a really good advantage now I know with a tick and a volume and and uh, I believe you can even get now a Renko um, uh, indicator it will show you where it's going to close so uh, and we can estimate or guesstimate where it's going to close and put in a buy stop or a sell stop however in a fast moving market that makes it very very difficult for an example I use a tick countdown timer and that's great in a normal market so say on CL where I've got a 233 tick countdown uh, candle I can see it ticking down so I can be prepared to enter a trade just before it closes or as it closes however on the ES where I'd normally trade the New York session with a 550 tick it's gone I mean in seconds we've we've flung straight through it so that's very very difficult so we need to either increase the time frames on these okay or use time based or once again look at it look at alternative market so time based sort of has a heads up but you'll still see in a moment that you can still have some real volatility or very large candles even on a 15 second or a 30 second uh, candle so the next thing is our time frame which we pretty much discussed is that the larger the time frame generally for larger your stop loss so that can be a real concern so you just need to look at that your entry point of course if you use EMAs or, or say moving averages uh, in your trading what we generally find is the further the market moves away from your major EMAs the more likely you are to is to have a snapback to the EMAs and so what we're finding is that you can pick up easily four or five tick slippage from a normal entry so already you've ran right out from your EMAs or moving averages whatever you use might go a little further then you get that pullback okay so this extreme volatility can be quite challenging even for your entry and with your entry what type of uh, market order do you use do you go to market where a typical market order in a fast moving market maybe for even four or five ticks uh, even on the ES we've been seeing that in the last week to use a limit order has been near impossible it's moving that quickly so we do need to then consider a buy sell stop which in a fast moving market by the time you get it on unless you're well away from where price is sitting at the moment it can be very difficult so these fast markets can be really challenging so we've got to consider that slippage issue uh, not just on the buy sell that's not the issue but on the uh, on the market orders now the next one is our stops and the 2% rule I recommend to all traders that you never ever ever and you never break the rule of having more than a 2% risk factor the lower the better and as you build your account size you want to drop that down to 1% or even lower if you're trading a very large account now even if you've got a stop loss in place with the 2% rule we've still been witnessing three and four ticks slippage if it goes against you that's right just because you've got your stop in place doesn't mean price is going to go smash through your uh, your stop loss and you get slip you need to remember that okay so don't be surprised if you're seeing that so on uh, and you know we're looking at 
trading platforms like uh, TradeStation, which I use, members use NinjaTrader, they're being what, what I call choke with the amount of data that's flowing into them at the moment and so we're experiencing time delays or lags in execution and then we get slippage and it goes on and on and then we've got issues with our targets as well because if we're getting in late uh, it just goes on so traders it's very very difficult trading fast moving markets but there is some good news and it's this there are some markets that are very tradable let's start off with first of all looking at the ES now what I've got here on the left is my is an ES chart 15 second a one minute and a three minute so we can see I've got my countdown timers now my countdown timers I've got two different types don't allow me to go by the second that is yes it'll tick down from a one minute chart but it doesn't work on say a 15 or a 13 sec sorry a 30 second chart so time-based charts are still uh, there's still some advantages to those uh, on the basis and let's just we're in the Globex session I'm recording so let's just go back to the New York session so here we go all right so if we look at some of these moves though, look at this two four so you're looking at um, uh, that's uh, eight ticks two points just in that sort of little move just there now when you trade a fast market I know you can trade the breakouts okay so here if we looked at a fractal break you've got one there you've got one there you've got one there you've got one here you've got one here and you can be swept into the market and yes if you're quick enough and you've actually got for 15 seconds you've sort of got on average about 30 seconds to one minute to put in a sell stop order or a buy stop if you trade fractal breaks you can you know you've usually got time to put in a sell stop or a buy stop the one thing you can also look at is that once it starts and once you've got a good solid trend and you're trading what I call full candles you usually been swept with the trend okay so here it's it's very hard when you get this sort of move to lose um, that is if you're trading with the trend and you've got a sufficient stop okay like just there we would have about a, a, a 10 I'd say let's have a look we've got uh, the low of that is 1250 the high is uh, 15 well there, well there you got it that's four points okay that's 16 ticks that's $200 stop if you use that now the red dots here are my ATR so yes you can use an ATR and have your stop at the ATR so it's still quite challenging it becomes even more challenging is when we hit a choppy zone just don't want to show you all the good areas let's look for chop because when we start to get into these these can be some of the challenging areas uh, let's have a look here as you can see here, there's lots of good areas but it's these challenging areas that can be the account killers so first of all this is a consideration that you look at a time based chart now as I mentioned we are in the globex session right now so let's have a look at the two tick Renko let me expand this I've got my uh, I've got my I call this my entry chart my anchor chart one anchor chart two and members you should be familiar with these by now if you're a member of a public watching this uh, you can trade with one higher time frame if you wish but it becomes very very powerful when you do introduce an anchor chart to your trading so if we look at this right now from there that's uh, 2053 right over there 2053 that's um, uh, 2119 so we can see here in 22 minutes on a two tick Renko this has been the price action in that time now generally speaking during the globex session you'll find you can trade a one tick Renko most of the time uh, and we can see here that a two tick you've got to be really nimble so one of the key considerations uh, in a fast moving market also traders is really this is to make sure that you're trading with the trend yes you can still do very very well with your t3 type trades or your divergence type trades once you know your stuff however for a newer trader or if you're not consistently profitable I really recommend that you just look at your anchor chart 
and make sure that you're executing trades these are your divergence type trades when you get down here but just stick to trading with the trend there's a ton of trading opportunities in fast markets now for the members watching this we can see here we've got a great ABC there you've got a lovely trade there here is a typical divergence trade right here okay so let's just have a look at that one let me just quickly click here and let's just see if that was a 2d let me just do this okay now that within itself was just a t19 so members watching this that was a standard t19 but what can you tell about this move a key consideration traders is that when you trade is that if you're considering taking a divergence trade is how many time frames do I have divergence on well here I've only got divergence on the lowest time frame the next key consideration is do I have angulation look at the amount of price look at the amount of angulation from price action angling away here can you see that the big V that's what we call angulation the next consideration is if I was to enter the market and in this case I enter on the close of my third candle I know they're bricks here Renko but I call them candles still have I got enough room from my entry to the 34 as a minimum to take a profit it's a big yes in this case so other words this is a great trade even though I've only got divergence on one time frame now it also tells me traders that when you have angulation like this if you get another bounce or an EMA bounce here uh, off your EMAs like we did have here that many of these will fail this is profit taking then it will continue back in the direction of the trade so in looking at this and let's just go back a little more on the two tick whoops just go back a bit further to the globe session uh, where are we here there were some opportunities but it's mighty fast let's now have a look at CL the black gold the Texas T so if we look at uh, black gold this is a uh, 2130 and what are we, what time we got there this is 2221 so this is in the last 50 minutes of trading and let me just perhaps expand this out for you a little easier to see here so what we can see here is trading with the trend there's still been some great uh, opportunities so let's just perhaps analyze just just analyze okay so we can see here bang 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 so here are our classic uh, trades so members you got your rule of ones you've got your 34s uh, we come up here no doubt you would have had right there you've got a bounce off for 50 cent level then you form a beautiful t7 and that also traders would have been a 2d when you've got a 2d where do we target the 89 now when we look at that let's just check the timing 2001 2001 2003 that was over two minutes and then you've got a nice ABC setup thank you very much All right and that there traders if you're using a higher time frame would be an ABC setup pulling back to the 78% level on your anchor chart too okay here is a classic 2b here is another classic 2b so what we can see here during the globex session there's a ton look at that angulation all right look at that that is a trade you'll take every day of the week so that's a two tick Renko which is too fast when you're trading the uh, CL during the New York session so during the New York session we generally trade a four tick Renko so if we look at the four tick Renko which I've got up here uh, and we look at the Globex open the, okay so this is the Globex open right just just here had a beautiful uh, 2d pivot bounce right here that's a, uh, a 2b you uh, then come up um, you had no doubt that was probably a 2d but either way you can see our rule of one entries we then get another bounce here off the 50 cents and we come down however what I really wanted to show you was New York now during the the New York session there were still a ton of very very tradable trades 
so this is 11 30 in the morning just start really it doesn't matter really what we look at new and once again you can ignore the CT trades if you're a new new trader I'd really recommend you sit those out initially but uh, um, okay nice winner nice winner um, uh, uh, look and and by the way traders you can argue that yes anyone can look back in hindsight and say that um, uh, they're easy to see however let's go to the right hand side of the chart for a moment okay so we've got a concept and we call it get ready get set go so if you're trading say um, a Renko chart it can just be easier let's just do it here on the Renko here's what we do we see price action pulling back when you see price action pulling back particularly on a deep pullback I do want to see to for a trade entry to qualify I want to see for three higher closes so when I see a trade pullback say to an 89 this is the time where I'm getting ready however what we do know is that the first pullback after a 2d or a t19 about 50% will fail so this is a very low probability where a 2b in normal conditions here here these are these are all our 2b's I won't go into them right now but uh, they're all winners so we do know that when they fail and they're playing vanilla so when we see price action looking looking pulling back uh, let me just uh, do this I'm just going to turn off my white paint bar because uh, it's going to okay so what I'm looking for here is as we come back we come back and in the coaching sessions as I say traders what are we looking for we're coming back we're coming back to what the pivot we've come back to the 200 and we've also come back to the 46 a barrel so what do we expect of that level a bounce or a reversal coming back so what are we looking for is our first green candle there it is there so we have a signal that says get ready second green candle get set third green candle is a go always on three higher or three lower closes if you're a non-member watching this there are a number of other conditions of course uh, what's happening on the anchor charts but they're rules based strategies but what we can see traders that's over an hour there in that time frame there were a ton of great trading opportunities so two B's uh, uh, as we know two B's if we look at those two B two B and there's one just up here all winners are the highest probability trade we have but then we've got our 34 B's and our rule of ones the kick butt okay so we can see here whilst the CES was very untradeable there's some great opportunities on CL now let's have a look at the currency at the uh, euro currency which is six dollars to and by the way if you're if you don't not familiar with CL it's ten dollars a tick so what we can see here with the uh, the euro currencies at 625 a tick I'm just looking at a one tick Renko so and let me expand it for us okay so first of all let's have a look at that move just here 14 14 23 44 see how long that took see that there okay now that is what we call a t3 or a snapback that was over minutes you had a ton of time to get ready now if you don't like Renko's you can also of course use the tick uh, tick chart you could use um, I'd be recommending during the globex session maybe a 55 tick okay and you can see here uh, if you had have got out if you were scalping for four to six ticks remember you can trade the tails and you can trade your ruler ones and we come down here and look at that angulation traders look at that then we had our typical ABC setup we had our typical that would have been a 2b and what have we got here traders it is a 200 overshoot let's have a look and see what it's telling us on the anchor chart one lo and behold what is it here we've got a on the anchor chart one you've got a pivot bounce but on the anchor chart two you've got a 289 B okay these are trades that are pattern based we see them every day but now I'm getting carried away here what I want to really get across here is that the uh, euro currencies are very tradable let's now have a look at the 10-year note 
now mind you we are in the globex session right now okay so since the globex open actually this is good to show okay so it's been open for four or five hours now and this is the entire action from the 10 year note in that time and it's 1562 a tick now we can see from the open we had a nice little ABC then we had some beautiful 34s on the way up what about during New York now remember we turned over 3 million contracts today okay so you go and have a look at your traditional trend following okay so we're only talking about trend following here you had a trade you had a trade you had angulation stopped on that one if you took and you took that one and you may remember most of these will fail it turned into an ABC you had a trend you were stopped if you took that one on that one then you had a nice little winner okay so following the trend unless you get extreme angulation uh, with great divergence and let me just see what we had on that one let me just see there yep looks like it's just a t19 but look at that angulation once again so what I really wanted to get across here traders was that um, uh, even in fast-moving markets there are still some great trading opportunities but what you've got to do traders you've still got to be extremely cautious find a market where it's what I call tradable a market that's within your uh, your risk parameters of your trading account and your level of experience so thank you traders and I certainly hope you picked up a few ideas and tips from this video